Good morning. Today's devotion is called The Important Things. Um, if you're anything like me, I, I'm a bit claustrophobic and you may feel like the walls are closing in on you a little bit and getting a little stir crazy. And in the middle of all that, I want to talk about the important things today. Someone asked Jesus that question in, in Mark chapter 12, and he said, of all the commandments, which is the most important? And Jesus answered, the most important. So I want to, uh, and that's, that's talking about living a, a priority-based life. You know, the Bible is full of priorities. Uh, seeking first the kingdom. Mary has chosen the better part. That's the language of prayers. And here we see in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. That's my text. I know Sister Carrie Peters uh, mentioned it the other day, but I want to talk about the end of this. Jesus replied, and just read, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. In other words, Jesus is saying the second you can't tear the two apart. You can't say you, you love God, but you don't like your neighbor. John's, uh, First John says so. The second is just like it. Lo love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Wow, that's it, folks. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus says. And all the law and the prophets hang on those two things. It's like you have this picture of the Old Testament, all those words, and it just hangs on one nail. Love God, love your neighbor. I just find that incredible because I looked at my Old Testament Bible, of the, in the Bible, and there's 1,454 verses or pages in that Bible, and uh, he sums it up in 11 words. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Bingo. So, so love is such a miracle. You go online, there's so many voices talking about this and this and that and the, at this present time, but really, is it that complicated? Jesus told his disciples, "Well, I've got so much more to say to you, more than you can bear right now. You know, you can't handle it." And so, what did he tell them? Love one another. <laughs> Like, it's incredible. I think when we get to heaven, I think the, the Lord's going to ask us, did you learn how to love? Did you learn how to love? I hope so. So love your neighbor. That's one of the verses that's been highlighted to me, certainly in these in these last, uh, in this present time. Did you know that's the most in, quoted verse in the New Testament, from the Old Testament? As far as I can tell, anyways, love your neighbor as yourself. The darkness needs light, you know, so uh, God can do anything through through imperfect vessels so we need to we need to shine and lead and bring leadership to this broken world you know and so what's important well love remains and then there's a maybe there's another question well then if i love my neighbor who's my neighbor well i think if you remember the story of the good samaritan someone asked jesus that question who is my neighbor and uh so we know that story but i just want to say maybe you know the samaritan could help because he had a purse and uh, maybe you have a purse but it's empty but there's other ways, you know, the, the Bible talks in the Old Testament, a very powerful verse, but what's in your hands? And I want to read Deuteronomy 16, verse 16 to 17. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. So it's not always finances that we can give. You know, uh, maybe it's not a purse, but maybe it's a smile. I was walking down Catawba Street here, and I just, somebody's driving by, and I was just walking, and I just smiled. And as they drove by, they, they almost, the smile stopped them. They turned and looked at me like this, and they smiled back. Maybe they just needed a smile. Maybe somebody just needs a knock on their door to make them feel like they're, you know, like they're bright in their heart, you know. Some folks just, they need to know they're not alone. So you may feel stuck. You may feel closed in. You know, your world's getting small. You feel like the walls are crushing in on you. Well, the disciples were in that place one time after the resurrection. They were hiding out. Their champion was gone. They felt like they were, you know, at a little lost. And uh, the doors were all locked, but Jesus walked right through those walls. The Bible said he showed him the scars in his, in his side, or inside in his hands. In other words, he'll find a way. He'll find a way. God is not boxed in. You know, it's getting so dark, you might say, but sometimes that darkness that you're feeling is just a shadow of his wings. <laughs> John 7 and verse 38 says this, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And in Ezekiel 47, in verse 9, it says, everywhere that river flows, it comes alive. So out of our bellies flows, and everywhere, every situation, every relationship we're involved in, I think God wants us to speak life over these dry bones, over situations, speak life. Out of our belly is going to flow rivers of living water. So today, bring forth life. Start a fireworks. Just fireworks. Amen. All right, Father, just we just ask you now to forgive us for our lack of love. In your precious name.